Welcome to the Strategy Mob Podcast. Tune in for everything you need to know to stay in the know regarding the automotive industry. Here's your host, Jason Harris. Hey, 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 what's going on, Podcast Nation? It is Jason Harris here. Hey, thanks for joining me another episode of Strategy Mob. Today, I have a very special guest, and I'm super excited to actually talk about this because it's a topic that's been coming up a lot in a lot of the consulting and conversations I've been having with dealerships. I have the one, the only, the oh-so-famous Mr. George Nenny in the house. George, thank you for taking the time to jam with me today. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Jason. Hey, George, for everybody out there that kind of don't know who you are, kind of how you got started in the business, I thought it'd be cool to kick off today's podcast with a little origin story. So what sure. is the origin story that is George Denny? <laughs> yeah, yeah. My, my origin story is I, I joined a family business. Uh, two, I'm the youngest of seven. Two of my oldest brothers uh, started a business called Dealer Specialties, which most people are familiar with. Back in um, Thanksgiving of 89, actually, it, it, uh, the business was kind of started at, at Thanksgiving dinner table with family members. But anyway, uh, I joined them in 93. We grew that business like wild from 94 to 2000. Uh, it was a franchising business in those days. Really covered the country, covered you know most provinces in, in Canada as well, and then sold the business to Trader Publishing in January of 2000. The two brothers retired. I stayed on with Trader. They began making acquisitions in digital marketing, websites. It was just uh, a great time. Over, over time, Trader became Dominion Enterprises. They divested and uh, traded some businesses back and forth with Cox. And um, I stayed on with Dominion and ran operations for digital marketing, ran dealer specialties, and uh, left in August of 2017 to start what I thought was going to be a, a traditional agency was something I, I wanted to do. And um, non-competes really kept me from doing that. And so instead, I decided I'd consult for a year and see what was out there and really fell into uh, really advocating for dealers and just not selling services, but helping dealerships be better consumers of digital marketing. I, I, oops. There we go. I, well, it looks like my computer decided to do an update all of a sudden. Hey, there we go. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, I think that was actually one of the reasons I connected with you because I thought it was so cool that you had decided to go and build an entire business um, around just really supporting the dealer. Um, you know, they're, 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 uh, look, I am on the agency side and, and I love being on the agency side. So I, I love doing the execution and the creation and developing out the strategies and going out there, do that. Um, but I hate to say that there's a lot of agencies out there that don't necessarily do it the right way. And when it comes to, you know, SEO and Google My Business, there's a lot of just misunderstandings as far as kind of, you know, the techniques and the strategies and maybe sometimes even necessarily the importance of it. So I thought we'd actually kind of start there. So, you know, for George, for all of the, you know, the, the dealer principals and the general managers and the parts managers and service managers and sales managers that are listening right now, I thought what we kind of do is maybe kind of go through the importance or maybe even some strategical tips on Google My Business uh, for each department. So let, let's start with the sales department because, you know, that's one that always gets all the glory. <laughs> we'll move into service and parts. So if, if from a sales perspective, all right, what are some of the things that dealerships can be doing to capitalize in their Google My Business accounts today? Sure. Well, the, the primary listing for a dealership is typically their, their sales listing. And for dealerships who just have one listing, typically that might be you know, Nenny Chevrolet, and that's really the sales account. And, you know, I, I don't, I don't advise dealers to only have one. Uh, I advise them to have multiple, but if you were just having one, you know, build it out. Of course, you want to, you want to feed it content and the, and the primary content elements that it will help you rank. Uh, there's two pieces. One is online reviews and two is photographs. Now there's lots of other things you can add to your Google, my business, but we have found those two items tend to trigger more searches, more views, and then more actions on your Google My Business. And we, we track that all through an API with Google My Business for our dealers. And so we, we see their numbers monthly and we know what, what tends to move the needle. Now, when we're thinking of kind of creative for the sales department, um, I, I think we immediately go to like, I just need to like take my OEMs off or whatever the clear out event is or whatever the my choice event. And we just kind of we just cut that up and then we'll just kind of stick it in there. Um, but that's not necessarily as from a creative perspective, probably necessarily the best 
the best strategy there. Um, when we're thinking of sales, I mean, we're, we're putting images out there that we want people to connect with. And you know what, at the end of the day, they, they know you're a GM dealership. They know you're a Honda dealership. It's literally kind of in the title of what you are, right? This is really a great opportunity for a dealership to show what makes them unique and what kind of the, a great first impression of a, why you should visit my location versus maybe somebody else's. And I'm sure that, you know, you've consulted with a lot of dealerships. So you've probably seen some really good execution and maybe some not so good execution of this. Can you, can you give me maybe a, a good example and a bad example, kind of creatively what was put out there? Sure. Uh, from a from a photography perspective, you know, dealers there, there's two there's two groups with Google My Business. There's customer photos, and then there's there's owner photos. And so the customer photos are the photos that your shoppers or you know your your buyers uh, instead would upload. Uh, hopefully, as part of a review, they might just upload a photo anyway. Even if they weren't a customer, anyone can upload a photo to a dealer's Google My Business. The dealer should should curate those. You know, look at those on occasion. Make sure that they're 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 nice and sharp and they represent the dealer. Um, we've had crazy. Th- I mean, we had dealers with pictures of you know two people making out in a side office got uploaded to the Google <laughs> My Business. The dealer's like, "What do I do?" And so it's really easy, right? You just flag that for deletion; and it'll go away. On the owner photos, uh, if you go into your Google My Business uh, in the photo section, it will it will allow you to see that you can have a a brand image, you can have a a background cover image, you can upload videos, staff pictures, and so. They allow you to kind of sort those out, but you want good good photographs that represent really really what makes you stand out. It may just be the facilities themselves, and and, and you know how how clean and open the facilities are. It may show your staff, your uniform staff, um, you know, going about their 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 uh, daily business. But um, those are some important pieces. But I also think consumers like behind the scenes. You know, they they mm, want to I see. Agree. I like that. Yeah. Even, even though it's boring to us, but. They, they, they might want to see your body shop, see, see a car coming in that, that's wrecked, and then you know, the before-after picture of how your body shop really turned that around. Or even if you've got the new, you've got the new Bronco or the new you know, Mach-E or whatever it is you know, coming into the showroom and coming in on a truck, taking a, taking a video of that and going out there with the helmet cam and, and kind of making a, a tongue-in-cheek video about uh, getting new vehicles. But uh, you know, th- those, those can be interesting ideas. And I like I like those. I think they're great ideas. I mean, but but to your point, I mean, it really is the customer's kind of first impression of your sales department. It, it kind of it, it tells the customer, all right, kind of what the the tone or the mood or the kind of personality that may or may not be when I actually when I actually show up, right? I mean, I think of it like right. we're all consumers. I consume. I do the exact same thing. All right, I'm looking for a business, and boom. Google My Business pops up right on the side. Oh, there's some pictures. I look at the pictures. Once I'm done looking at the pictures, I read the reviews and I kind of start to see how the two connect. It's like, whoa, there's some happy customers and happy salespeople and happy employees and reading through the reviews and they say it's happy. So, you know, I, I, I pictures are great. I mean, look, I had a dealership the other day. They're like, Jason, but we're a four point, we're a 4.7. 4.7 you know it's like do we really need to take it's the good. time to put the pictures out there and i said yes you do because it solidifies your 4.7 it, it's one thing for me to read through the reviews and 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 hear how amazing the experience is and how happy people are i mean it's great the dealership's doing an amazing job right it really is but if pictures are worth a million words man for me to actually see those happy customers see those smiling staff like that that's going to for me as a consumer, that's that's it's, it's really going to uh, make me want to probably visit that dealership before I go visit the other dealership that maybe also had good reviews, but I didn't get to see that in in the proof itself. Do you find that to be true? Yeah, yeah, very much so. Um, and I would also keep in mind that the photos are not only for the consumers, but they're also for the Google algorithms. You know, so so um, as, as as I mentioned, we, you know, we've we've seen the impact of of so when it, when a dealer first starts up a parts Google My Business or a service Google My Business or Body Shop and they haven't had one yet, we can see that the activity starts off really slow. Like Google won't even it's very difficult to find the listings. Dealers will call us and say, George, I I created it, but I really have a hard time finding it other than yeah. zooming in on the map. And we say, look, add photos, get a couple of reviews, and you'll see that change overnight. And it's not as if consumers saw those photos. It's the Google algorithms that see the, that content and then say, okay, we're going to anoint you. Yes, you're now a 
a legit Google My Business listing. Search Engine Land um, came out with a study in February of 2020 that said they had a correlation where when uh, businesses have more than 100 owner photos, not customer photos, but owner photos, mm -hmm. they tend to get more than their fair share of searches, views, and actions. So what, what an easy thing you can do. So we yeah, advise no dealers do, do about 10 a week. Uh, and, and pretty soon you'll be over 100 photos and we'll see the views jump and, and activity uh, right along there with it. You know, I'm, I'm so glad that you, you said kind of that 10 a week, right? Because, you know, we're, we're going we're gonna to get into the topic of SEO. And, and I think it's great to start with Google My Business before you kind of get into really what kind of SEO is and how the two actually really kind of correlate with each other. But people have to understand that it is a routine. Like the best of the best dealerships out there that execute this really well have done what you you said, George. They've created a routine, a process to ensure that you know these efforts are always being executed. And it, it, it's look, it's it's huge for your business. And now um, we've mentioned a couple times multiple Google My Businesses, George. I'm still dumbfounded today. I mean, it's been been a couple years several years that we've been able to run multiple google my business how long has it been i'm trying to think <laughs> it's been a while yeah, yeah right? at least at least a couple years yeah, yeah right and, and i'm still surprised to find out how many dealerships have no clue what the hell we're talking about when we're saying that you can actually create multiple google my businesses so for everybody out there that's that's heard you now talk about multiple ones let's talk about that real quick kind of when it started and what are the importance and the benefits of doing so Sure. So, so um, you know, Google allows and even endorses the idea of dealers having multiple Google My Business accounts. And if you look at some of the big box retailers, this was really where it, the, the, the light bulb went off for me. And again, this was in, in, the, in the spring mm -hmm. uh, of this year when I began to, to see the big boxes, Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot. Uh, we have Kroger Groceries in the U.S. in my area. If you go to a, a Google um, search bar and search for bakery near me or deli near me, or pharmacy near me, mm -hmm. I promise you Walmart's gonna be in the first several of those listings on their Google, uh, on I, Google I Maps. I saw that too. I, and actually, we, yeah. I actually noticed it uh, with Best Buy uh, electronic services. Like, uh, uh, I think I was looking for repair, computer repair services and Best Buy as a separate division came up in it. Right, right. See, so you can only take a single Google My Business listing and optimize it for you know so many topics. You can't have it be relevant for everything. You can't have a single dealer listing be relevant for all the collision and body shop terms, the parts terms, brake repair, also new car sales, all those things. And so the departments allow you to optimize and really increase your real estate on Google My Business for the most important type of search, which is non-branded category mm -hmm. search. So mm -hmm. that's the most important concept. If you get nothing else from this podcast, understand that winning on Google My Business is not winning on your name, not winning on your brand name. Google takes care of that. Winning on Google My Business is winning on non-branded category search. That's very true. Oil change near me, body shop near me, those sort of, and, and the multiple department listings uh, can allow you to to to, uh, to rank there. And and that actually kind of leads us kind of into the parts and service department, right? Because I mean, talk about a department that can, I mean, really get the benefit of this. And and, and the cool thing is we track so much in the parts to parts and service department. I mean, you can see the, the, the real ROI. I mean, you can see the entire click path from the Google, my business straight to filling out the appointment form and showing up to the service department and spending their $160 and 72 cents. <laughs> you know, it's like, so it's, it's, it's super, super important uh, for parts and service departments. Now I've actually kind of seen this, I've almost kind of seen it 50, 50 where the parts and service department will do a second one together. I actually think they should parts and service should both create their own because I'm huge in accessory and parts and I think it has to have its own identity. What are your kind of thoughts? Yeah, I, I agree and it's uh, it's relatively light lifting. You're not gonna get a ton of activity on the parts listings. It'll be no, non, you won't hardly see any branded searches for your parts, which is great, it's all category search. Yeah, but around service, you can really optimize that service uh, as a standalone and of course, you know, body shop off on its own uh, as well. Oh, body shop, body shop's huge. And you know what the funny thing is body shops never spent, you know, body shops actually live on Google My Business because you ever seen a good body shop website? <laughs> No, <laughs> like and most of the like most of the body shops and dealerships own. It's like a little side note somewhere on their website, like a page or something like that. But you know, majority of 
the phone calls and majority of the traction that is developed it comes from the Google My Business. We recently did that last year for a, a collision department that never once did it, and they were like, they actually asked us to turn it off. I'm like, oh, damn. Can't turn it off. I don't know what you're talking about, but it, but it did great things for them. Um, but I think that actually kind of leads us into my next conversation is you know doing it yourself, which I'm a hundred percent for, and I think you you guys do a great job of educating uh, dealerships out there on how to do it themselves because it really is kind of a do it do it yourself type platform. Can you talk? To, tell me a little bit about the course and some of those educational materials uh, that you have for Google My Business. Sure. Yeah, that's that's one of the beautiful things about Google My Business is is the work is very light lifting and it's it's mm-hmm, very mm-hmm. straightforward. It's just a matter of getting committed to, to to doing it. And so our our um our book, A Car Dealer's Guide to Google My Business, right over my shoulder here, is available on Amazon. And the second edition came out uh, just several weeks ago, uh, all updated with with uh, with the the latest uh, how tos. And you know, it's it's a big full color guide, step by step, takes you through screen by screen. Here's how you you enter and, and uh, input all the information. And uh, it, it's um, for a dealer, some of the changes they'll make to their Google My Business will literally be overnight success. Oh, I mean, huge. If, you, if you've got the wrong categories and you begin to put the right categories in, that, that affects your search the very next day, uh, which, is, which is pretty amazing. And you know, if dealers are paying for SEO and they've, they've, been, a, they've, been, they've been taught over the years that they've got to spend $1,000 to $4,000 a month every, every month on SEO, Really, local SEO today has become all about Google My Business, yep, 100%. and the dealers can do much of that work themselves. No, the dealer really can. Sorry, and it, train. Oh, I, can I can't even hear. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> at least, it, it, at least, it's not my staff like playing ping pong outside. Um, <laughs> that's I had that one the other day. It sucked. Um, but uh, no, I, I, I think getting into the vendor side of this because you brought kind of something up and. It actually upsets me sometimes. I, look, I think there's some great companies out there that do wonderful things for dealerships in the form of uh, supporting Google My Business and SEO efforts. And then I, I hate to say it, there are a lot of snake oil salesmen out there uh, when it comes to SEO. I, I just recently was consulting with a dealership that had been working uh, with a, a local company on their SEO efforts and been paying anywhere between a thousand to two thousand dollars a month for the last eight years. And what this company was pretty much doing was actually taking credit for what Google My Business was generating and saying that is, you know, because of our SEO efforts and the time that we put into this, which there wasn't. I mean, the minor, minor, like, you know, description, HTML, like description or metadata description changes. Like there was like really not a lot of time in content put into this. And that's what they were using to do that. I hate to say it, but there's a lot of snake oil out there. So, so with that said, George, um, you know, I, I want to find someone that can help me take my Google, my business and my SEO game to the next level. How do I do that? You know, but I actually wait before I guess I ask that question. Let's talk a little bit about what SEO is today, because I still find today I'll sit down and talk to a lot of dealerships and find out that their understanding of SEO stopped somewhere right around 2010. Um, <laughs> so what you know, what 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 does SEO mean to dealerships today? Yeah. So so SEO uh, today, as I said, especially local SEO is all about Google My Business, because 100 percent of the time that you search for a business in Google, they're going to either return to you a single Google My Business listing or they'll return to you the map pack of three results um, and, and you know, winning placing on that on that Google My Business or placing that map pack it really becomes SEO. Right. Because that's that's the first listings on organic search. But, you know, Jason, even if you go back to 2010 or you flash forward to 2020, you know, if you're paying for SEO, the most important questions you can ask are, what were your deliverables last month? What, what new things did you deliver for me SEO-wise last month? Did you build new content pages? Did you do new optimization of my current pages? Exactly. Did you, exactly. Do you have a backlink strategy? All those, there's got to be, it's not a set and forget it. it, it there's got to be deliverables. And, and especially today, if you're paying for SEO, and, and you don't hear the word Google My Business or you don't have someone Run. who's doing two or three <laughs> posts for you a month. Yeah, yeah, they're not really, they're, they're just charging you, not really delivering anything. No, it, look, it, it's totally true. I, I I still think that there are a fair amount of dealers out there that, that think of SEO as something that you can just buy. 
And mm-hmm. it, it's not, it's something you actually have to earn, right? It, it, it's a right. build it and they will come. It's very much so a field of dreams, right? If I take the time to build out the accounts properly, <laughs> then they will come. But, you know, just to sign a check to someone and hand it over, um, it's not necessarily a bad idea, but I think you have to be really, really cautious. You have to be aware, you have to be, you have to know what the strategy is. And I am dumbfounded right now how many dealerships I talk to that are paying like a really big name companies, <laughs> names that if I probably said on here, I'd probably get a letter from their lawyer about it, um, which wouldn't be the first time. But anyways, uh, <laughs> um, but if, 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 if your agency is not sitting down and having a real strategy around what your goals and objectives are, right? Like I, this is the, for me, this is how I know the agency is completely the wrong agency because they actually haven't sat down and had a, a, a real understanding of what your goals and objectives are. And then once once we understand the goal, the dealership's goals and objectives, then we can kind of reverse engineer backwards towards the our SEO strategies and what we want to track. Uh, what keywords are we are we focusing on? How do we want to rank with certain phrases? You know, what is ultimately important to them? Instead, I find a lot of companies will just kind of come in with like this templated like list and just say, nope, oh, this is this is it. This is this is what we do. So so how how does a dealership kind of filter through that? I mean, how do you know what's real and what's not real? I guess. Yeah, so I, I think if I were evaluating SEO providers, I would begin with with getting a good idea about what those deliverables are going to be on a regular basis, and um, decide how are they going to measure what good looks like, right? So that that ends up being also a really important piece. Is you know, from a dealer's perspective, every month they need to make sure that they're looking at their at their organic search traffic, both on mobile and on desktop, and saying, is it growing you know, month over month? Is it growing year over year over the last two or three years? What are the what are the what are the uh, the landing pages that are driving that traffic? So not only your homepage, but if they're building these content pages for you, you know, are those are those um, contributing to that traffic? But you know, those would be the big things for me. What are the deliverables, and how do you measure success? To where I can start to hear, okay, I'm hearing the right kind of things, and then then it's up to the dealer once they engage and and, and don't engage in a long term agreement. I mean, 90 days at most, hopefully, you know, 30 day agreements. Even though SEO, you can't measure SEO in 30 days, so you do need to give it at least three months, six months to run. But you have the flexibility. Um, but but you're watching that traffic, and they're showing you those reports, and you you have a good idea of um, whether it's working or not. No, it's true. Look, it, it's just solid work. It's just solid work sitting down and develop and developing out a strategy. Um, I wanted to now kind of go into um, uh, more on the parts and service side. I think I want to go back. I think I want to step back a little bit because I, I think there's just there, there's a, probably a few things there that you know that maybe we we, we didn't discuss. I, th- I think for sure you have seen some great examples of people kind of executing, and like I mean, for you, what have been some of the best or I guess the biggest success you've seen with dealerships really focusing on their parts and service business, you know, through SEO and Google My Business. And what did, what did that kind of look like? Yeah. So um, it, it, you know, at, at the first step, of course, is building out a separate Google My Business for service, a separate Google My Business for parts, and then optimizing those listings. And one of the biggest optimization uh, steps you can do is choosing the right categories. So in Google My Business, there are these predetermined categories you can choose, and you can choose 10 per listing. And the order, you have a primary category, which is the most important, and then you have cascading, you know, secondary categories. Make sure those are all filled out. Make sure you've chosen the proper primary category. So that would be, you know, uh, vehicle repair or if it were parts, you know. Um, uh, the appropriate parts uh, categories. And if you have the, um, if you have our book in the appendix, we have a listing of all the automotive categories, uh, all broken out, and then all the fixed operation categories by themselves. And so you can kind of go through and make sure those are all properly outlined. And then reviews. So, so um, one of the most indexed pieces in Google My Business listings are the reviews. And so while I don't want to game you know, gain the system too much. If you did have someone who asked you, hey, Jason, you know, I'd love to leave you a review for your service department. What should I say? Just, you know, you should say, what service did you get? Did you get brake repair? Did you get new tires? What was the year make model of your vehicle? Maybe, you know, I love, you know, my new tires for my 2020 Jeep Wrangler, you know, because those keywords will end up paying off in dividends when people are searching for those. Google indexes those keywords uh, primarily. 
Oh yeah, I think a lot of people don't even realize that that is that that when Google looks at it's not just the way that you're tagging or um, uh, which um, w- which words you're using to develop out your account. It's also what the customer actually says says actually a lot about it as well. You know, funny. I actually started my own. Google My Business account for myself. It was so funny. I've been helping dealerships create theirs and develop theirs for years. So I actually was sitting in a meeting one day and, and someone Googled strategy with Jason. They go, well, you don't have a Google My Business account. And I was like, oh, man, oh, I feel like an asshole right now. I'm like, you know what? You're right. I don't. You know, I find we, we spend so much time working on our client stuff that we always kind of seem to forget to work on our own stuff. And so I went and built one, did exactly what we normally do. And I actually had several clients or several new clients, so opportunities. So it, it was hilarious to actually for myself to go through the process and actually generate some new clients because of what I put out there and the way it was tagged. It was, yeah, I was looking, I was Googling this and you came up and I'm like, okay, that's awesome. That's great. Now I did want to talk to you a little bit about this. Um, what did you call it? It was a spy. Which GMB spy. GMB spy. There we go. I was going to say, I was going to say spy, GMB spy. I downloaded it this morning and I was playing with it. I think it's pretty cool. Um, that, like, what happened? You just woke up one day. You're like, Hey, I'm going to create a Chrome extension. <laughs> like, no, really. How did that start as, for as you? With, yeah. As with many things in, in this, you know, in our our business, we, we've, we've kind of fallen into opportunities just by listening and, and, and seeing what's going on. So in February uh, of 2020, I read an article that said that the, the Google My Business categories could be could be sniffed, could be read if you looked in the HTML and you knew what to look for. You could find your competitors' categories. And so I'm like, wow, that's a, that'd be a great trick. I'd love to know what our, our competing dealers are using for categories. And when I went through this exercise, you know, control F and then look for the, this little chill day ampersand, you know, look at them like, this is really clumsy. So it's a good thing, but it's a, it's a, it needs automation. And so I love Chrome extensions they are cool little widgets that, that are pretty light, lightweight uh, builds. And they're nice because you can just go to a page and then fire the widget and say, give me some information. So it's perfect for Google, my business. So I hired a developer and uh, really just over a weekend, he came out with a prototype, um, and, you know, what was interesting, Jason, is, is uh, I really did not, uh, I thought that, you know, I would use it at a ton, maybe some automotive mm-hmm. folks would find it kind of cool, uh, but I had no idea what the take up would be. Uh, the evening we launched, I got I was having a beer with my wife at the uh, dinner table, and I, I started looking at some SEO forums, and I decided, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little spamming, you know, so I went up to a couple <laughs> search forums that had been talking about Google My Business. I joined, I built a nice profile page, and then I said, hey, folks, here's this widget I just put up in the Chrome store. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Tell me what you think. And Darren Shaw, I got, got super, super lucky. Uh, that Darren Shaw was kind enough to, he was on that forum and he said, I would change nothing. I love it. And then he wow, tweeted cool. a few minutes later. And then his company, White Spark, tweeted a few minutes later. I didn't see any of that stuff. So I went to bed shortly after I did those posts. <laughs> I, wake, I wake up in the morning to angry posts from people in Spain and people in Ireland saying your, your, your uh, Chrome spy, uh, your, your GMB spy tool doesn't work in Ireland. I'm like, oh my God, what the world? <laughs> so, so overnight, yeah, we, we, the user growth had, had grown incredibly. We, we were adding like what, uh, 250 or so a day uh, users. And we, you know, the developer, we, we fixed it. We made it so it worked on all international domains. And we are just about to eclipse 4,000 uh, weekly users on this tool. What it does is it sniffs the category. So cool. It allows you to see why some businesses rank better than others uh, on Google My Business. And you know what? I think the thing that really kind of got me is that you did it for free. Like, sure. <laughs> like yeah. you, uh, you could have easily built this and charged, you know, the 1099 or the 1999 for like you could have easily done that. And I still think people probably would have downloaded it, but you just have such a passion you know, for this and for helping the dealer that you just, yeah, I'm just going to go and I'm just going to build it and do it myself, which I think was another reason why I wanted to connect because I think it was just so cool. But I just, I, I'm curious though, what motivated you to, because look, it takes time. Like you said, you had to hire a developer, it takes your time, all right? And it's not a one and done, all right? Once you build it, it still takes time to continue to ensure that it's actually working properly, right? So what motivated you to, to do this for our industry? Because I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, you know, it, as I, I thought about it, I thought, you know, it, it wasn't that complex. People could still solve the problem by simply, you know, doing the control F and looking at the HTML. So I simply made life a little easier. You know, it's, it's a, you know, the people that are using this tool are SEO specialists or digital marketers. And so the, 
you know, the universe of people who would have interest in it was pretty small. And I thought, you know, maybe someday we come up with some kind of freemium model, but uh, it was not, it was not a ton of hours to build. And so uh, I was happy for, for the, uh, to get the exposure and uh, you know, Moz did a, Moz did an article on us uh, in their Moz blog, mm-hmm. which, you know, uh, gave us a lot of good uh, SEO juice to our website, you know, from, from, from that exposure. So uh, it's all good. I, I think it's really cool. And I, I think for all vendors out there, you know, I think they can take, actually learn from something like this. It's Look, it's not enough that we meet our clients' expectations. We do kind of have to ask how we can actually kind of exceed those expectations. And, you know, you found in, in kind of an easy, simple way, I, I think it's actually bigger than you're talking. I think you, I, I know it didn't take a whole lot of time, but I just think you, it, this is something you could have easily monetized and you chose not to. And so I think that's that's actually really, really cool. Um, but you've definitely exceeded, you know, kind of your customers' expectations. I know it's getting towards kind of the tail end of our time, George, but before I let you go, uh, for, you know, all the managers out there that are listening, the service managers and the parts managers and the sales managers and the TPs and GMs all out there that are listening, you know, and they're, they're, they're sitting there, they're shaking their head up up and down going, you know what? I agree, George, like we, we got to do this stuff, you know, but I also have three people standing outside my door right now that need me to desk a deal or fix an RO or, <laughs> you know, and I got, I got reports sitting on my desk about yay hi. Like I, like I understand that it's not crazy difficult, but like I need to hire someone to help me do this. And I know that you consult with dealerships and kind of helping find the vendors or holding the vendors accountable. So anybody out there that's thinking of like, I need, a, I need to find someone to help me do this. What would be the top three things you say that they need to look for when finding uh, an individual or an agency that can actually assist them in getting their SEO and their Google My Business efforts done on a regular basis? Sure. So, so if you're looking to hire a consultant, I would, you know, and, and they were only a consultant, they weren't selling services, I would make sure that's the case. So make sure if you're hiring a consultant, that they're not also a reseller of the systems that they're providing you. Mm, that just that muddies point. the water yeah. too much. So, yeah, so from, from our perspective, we won't accept commissions or referral fees or, you know, rev, revenue sharing or anything from the vendors. We recommend plenty of vendors, but only if we've seen their results, we know it will work. And selfishly, we know it's a good solution for the dealers. But you know, if I were evaluating digital vendors, one, I want to know agency fees. Are they flat or are they variable? Mm-hmm. And what is what is that percentage? Is it is it is it something that's that's terribly high or is it something that's reasonable? Um, the other piece I want to know is, do they embrace Google Analytics? Because I think dealers should take control of the reporting themselves to some degree, even if they can only run one or two simple reports in Google Analytics. But to make sure that the the the, the agency uh, embraces that, you know. It's all about it's all about accountability. I, I, I'm so yeah. with you on that one. All about accountability, and then and then short term contracts, right? So we we advise dealers that you know this is not DMS, this is not CRM. You know, ninety days at at, at most, but preferably thirty day agreements. I mean, that's what we are with our dealers. We've had some dealers for three years that we've never lost, but we have to earn their business every single month. And if they want to like stop working that's with cool. us tomorrow, then stop working with us. Uh, you know, whenever you like. So. Yeah, you know what? I, I know I still have a few more minutes with you. So I do want to kind of pick your brain a little bit on Google Analytics because I, I got to be honest with you, this has been a sore like subject for me because I, I'm with you. Like I I will pound my fist on a desk and I'm like, your managers need to be trained. All right. You need to take the time to understand this. I can walk you through all of these reports all day long, but you know, you need to you need to be able to do it yourself. You need to know what you're looking at. How does it actually possibly affect um, your team? Now, I actually saw that you guys do offer a course. Is that, is that correct? Yep, um, it's a 29, 29 course, uh, three exams. Should be able to get through it in a couple of weeks. Now, and, and I think that's what it is. I think as, as an industry, like we always have to be teaching ourselves something new. All right. I mean, if I think of the best managers, the best dealerships I've ever worked with, almost kind of always had this mentality of that there's always something else that they can learn. <laughs> there's always something else they can push themselves. And like, I hate to say it, but when it comes to Google Analytics, there are thousands of reports, which means that there are thousands of ways for me to paint the picture. And, right. you know, it, it's it's very easy for an agency or a vendor to paint whatever picture they want to paint. Um, You know, but we just need to be educated enough. So tell me a little bit about this course before I let you go. 
Sure. So, so um, we designed the course to not be something to try to teach you soup to nuts, everything with Google Analytics. Um, we don't. We, we will not teach you every menu. We, we teach instead the core pieces that dealerships need to know. And it's all automotive flavored. So it's not, it's not for other industries. It's only for, for automotive retailing. And it just teaches you the, the things you need to know to hold your agency accountable. That doesn't mean that we don't dive deep. We, we dive deep into the appropriate reports. But, but for, for the dealer, we're trying to help them understand which of my investments are, are giving me the best return on investment, mm-hmm. the best payback. And how can I, how can I you know, manage uh, or oversee my paid search investments, my paid Facebook investments, my OEM traffic, my third-party classified referral traffic? How do I lasso all that and really put it all into a, um, uh, an equation where I can say, look, I'm getting a good deal here, or I'm overpaying here, uh, and so on. Um, it's all online. It's, it's 29, 29 lessons, but the lessons are all like three minutes, five minutes long. So really short lessons. Um, and then there's three exams to go through. And the feedback I've gotten uh, has been that they, they felt it was the best course they ever took. And they, um, they learned a lot and they, they put it into practice, which is the goal. Well, I, I, th- I think that's really cool that you guys went and built that. And um, I was looking online just now as we were talking, and I think it's very moderately priced. And it, it, again, like it, it's knowledge is power. We, we have to continue to teach ourselves. And a dealership, and look, management is has to be in a lot of these meetings. And, you know, I just, it drives me nuts when I'm in these meetings and I'm just watching some of these managers do one of these. They're just shaking their head, just kind of up and down. It's like, mm-hmm. I know you have no freaking clue what I'm talking about right now, but you're shaking your head up and down. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, it's like, I... I, I find the best relationships I have with my clients on the agency side is the ones that are able from a knowledge perspective, sit there and kind of push back and forth. Right. Like, like I, 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 I have no problem admitting it. You know, the other day I had a conversation with a client and they said something and I was like, I actually never thought of it that way, you know, and it was just like, it challenged me. And I find that that is the best relationships that I, I have. And they're also the longest lasting relationships I have is where we can actually kind of push back, push back. But for, for, for me to do that, the dealer needs to be educated. A educated dealer right. is a better client for me all day long. I and mean, there actually has been times where we've broken up with clients and, and I hate to say, it, but unfortunately a lot of it had to do with just a total lack of education. And they just saw something shinier that caught their eye and they decided to go that direction. I'm sure you've seen that happen, happen yeah, too. Very, very true. Hey, George. Um, um, the, 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 yeah. no, the, like, the other the other piece, just just to mention, so so we do have dealers that, that, that love the idea of Google Analytics, but they just can't seem to get someone to go through that course. They want yes. the data, but they really don't want to learn the platform. So we also offer a um, Google Data Studio deck that we dispense. We've got some large dealer groups that all we do for them is just reporting. But we've built this, I think, the best reporting in the business. It's all driven by Google Analytics and Google My Business. And we just set that up for the dealer. And then it's just reporting only. So the dealers can go through. They can run all the same reports. They don't have to know Google Analytics. but They can get all that data. What are my most expensive keywords? Which of my paid keywords gave me most of my conversions? And so on. And so um, there's lots of different options. I think that's really cool. And like I said, with so many thousands of <laughs> reports that can be generated, I think anything that can help a dealership save time um, is, is definitely beneficial for them. Uh, George, for everyone out there that's watching and listening right now and would love to connect with you and your company and maybe even buy the book. Um, by the way, is there audio on that book? Do you have you d- did you do an audio version of it? We did, we did not. I've, I've thought about doing it. We're actually working on a second book, so that's uh, hopefully coming out in a few weeks. Um, instead of a car dealer's guide to Google My Business, it's a car dealer's guide to digital marketing, which for me will be a full download of everything and uh, all the, the approaches that I take with a dealer in, in text. So that'll be a nice handbook for dealers as well. But so far, just print. Wow. I, I know, you know what? I'm going through the process right now of writing my first book, and I understand just the amount of time it takes just to just to download everything from the brain and put it all together. It's it's so much. So it's it, that's very cool. You got another one coming. We'll have to keep our eye out for that. Uh, but for everyone out there watching, listening, would love to connect with you. What is the best way to do so? I think the, the best way is just to Google my name. Uh, it's kind of a hard spelling, but George Nenny. You could also just Google GMB Spy. Or you could go to our website, Generations Digital. It's generations, plural, digital.com. But if you search for any of those things, we really work on our own SEO um, as much as we can. And so you should you should find us in the first few listings. That's awesome. Hey, George, thank you so much for taking the time to jam with me today. This has been a ton of fun. Yeah. You have yourself an amazing day. 
Thank you. You too. See you, Jason. Thanks for tuning in to the Strategy Mob Podcast with your host, Jason Harris. Don't want to miss new content? Be sure to sign up to be a mobster at strategymob.com to stay in the know. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe.